Today, I want to discuss about Manus AI, which is kind of a taking the internet by storm. And you've seen a lot of tweets about it, a lot of projects coming out of it. And what it is, essentially, it's like if you put Cloud AI, the artifacts, if you put deep research, if you put cursor all in one app, this is basically Manus. So it can create entire projects just from prompts, right? Like in this case, maybe a single prompt. And there are a lot of use cases and you can go to their website where you're going to find the use cases such as planning a trip to Japan. So I just want to say that a lot of problems with AI right now is the hallucination. So for example, you cannot do stuff like the laws or maybe, uh, you know, research stuff or papers because it makes a lot of mistakes and it's not doing uh, the, the research. It's not verifying the information. So in this case, that's why deep research is so popular. But also, I guess in this case, we can see in real time what's going on with Manus. You know, it also has access to a browser, so it's able to browse the internet to research, to go to several uh, social media platforms and find that information without having to rely on a database, uh, like usually outdated database where it's going to hallucinate a lot. Now, this I'm quite familiar with. Um, for example, you know, I go to Japan a lot, so I would know <laughs> if this is making a mistake. So I need a seven day Japan uh, trip, you know, uh, between uh, 15 to 23 of April from Seattle, etc. cetera, a uh, certain budget I want to propose and all that stuff. So in the end, I want a simple HTML travel handbook with maps, attractions, and stuff like that. So what is key here is that it's going to create a website. And, you know, this is not the website, but it's able to play the entire thing and here you can see if I click on the website and, you know, I, I go, I, I don't remember how I preview the website, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, yeah, here. <laughs> so it's not super clear, but I click on the website and this is the website, right? Like it's, it also has maps, right? Because that's what we're asking here with maps, attractions, uh, Japanese phrases and stuff like that. So budget, you know, it has a layout, it has drop shadows, it has, uh, you know, the timeline here. And I read through that information, it looks really good. So the, the usual trip when you go to Japan, right? Like Tokyo, Kyoto, uh, in this case, we want like shrines, we want like beautiful uh, places where you can potentially propose. And this is awesome. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to find the maps and it's integrated in the HTML. So you can see Manus is really impressive. And it's able to do that from a single prompt. So this is scary good. Now let's take a look at some more projects here. So uh, here you can ask like a prompt and it's, it's going to do it for you. And in here, we can see a lot of community projects from people. Uh, you know, FYI, right now, it, it is in um, kind of like invite-only mode. So if you go to Get Started, for example, you, you need to have an invite code and you need to apply for access if you don't have. And it's going to ask you, you know, why do you want to use it and etc. cetera. So I, I did apply for it. A lot of people applied for it. Some people have access to it. I don't. So that's why I'm only going to show you the use cases. They have a lot of these uh, examples on the website. And you can definitely explore. You can play uh, the entire thing. You can see like how it's able to browse the, uh, the browser and all that stuff. So it's really, really cool. And looking at the other project, you can see uh, this one is asking to clone a website, right? And uh, this is the Apple website. So we, we're quite, quite familiar with it. It's doing a really good job. Right. And then a lot of people right now are doing uh, 3D games. 
Okay, so, you know, 3D games in the browser using 3GS. Uh, my son happened to have created one using just prom and cursor. And that was like, uh, I believe, six, six months ago. So um, I couldn't find, you know, like the, the, the direct link to the website. But you can see from this video right here, you know, it's a 3D game. And I believe this is from a single prompt. And uh, yeah, really impressive. Another 3D game right here. Really impressive. Model changer. You can, uh, you know, change the styles and the costumes. It looks like Red Dead Redemption. Uh, if you're familiar with games, I am. I, I, I'm, you know, sort of a gamer myself. So uh, website optimizations, a lot of people use that. Yeah, you know, like there's just so many examples, which is why I think this is this project is particularly impressive compared to like a lot of other projects out there that claims make a lot of claims, but we don't really see real life examples. In this case, we do, which is why I think I'm even more impressed. And the fact that they're making it available, all of these use cases where you can replay. So in this case, for example, I thought this was really interesting. It's trying to create a, a, a high speed <laughs> freezing machine. And I was able to watch it. I was uh, I, I was reading some of the papers, um, and yeah, it 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 looks really sound. I'm obviously not an expert uh, here. It's asking for a Nvidia stock analysis dashboard, so that's going to be interesting to see how it's going to build a dashboard, perhaps in the form of a HTML or I don't know whatever format is possible. But you can see that behind the scene, it is running code. So I think this is a trend that is kind of happening in the world of AI right now, especially with cursor, vibe coding, for example. Uh, this is kind of the new thing where people are just, uh, without kind of touching the code, they're just vibing, <laughs> you know, they're just prompting and they're not, you know, really coding. Uh, some of them have never coded before. And so, you know, I've been doing that with DreamCut for a while. Uh, I'm I'm barely touching the code anymore. Uh, it used to be 95%. Now it's more like 99% of the code is by AI. So it's really scarily good. And you can see here, uh, this is the dashboard. So I guess it's in the form of an image. Maybe I can find more formats. But yes, create React app. So it seems to be a React website with interaction. So that's so, so impressive. Um, yeah, I mean, like, that's incredible. So interactive, you know, like a, a Stripe dashboard, you can switch between monthly, weekly, uh, the price, different d data, and, you know, using this to interact with a website. So it's not just a PDF, it's not just an image, it's not just a, and it's even able to take the screenshots and all of that stuff. So extremely impressive. I would say this is the next iteration of cloud artifacts and uh, deep research by OpenAI. Uh, but they came here and they already broke the market. So <laughs> we have it in front of us. It's probably going to take maybe a few weeks at least for the competitors to come out with something. But we have something and it's working. Obviously, it's early access. So not many people have access to it, but it's super, super impressive. And um yeah, you know, um, keep an eye on this one. Uh, I'm really excited to see how I'm I able to to sort of like build projects on t uh, from just from this, and most importantly, how you, as someone who doesn't know coding and who doesn't know, you know, all of these things, uh, all of that knowledge or the papers or the research, able to just prompt. You know, like you have something that you always wanted to build and just prompt it and let's, let me uh, manage to do it. So super impressive and, uh, you know, excited to see the future.